Welcome to Theory of Pets. I'm a passionate pet owner with a drive to help others like me uncover the truth about the pet industry and what goes on behind the scenes. Hey guys, I hope you're having a great week. My name is Samantha and this week on Theory of Pets, I want to talk about telemedicine. I'm hearing a lot of different things about telemedicine. Um, We have friends and family members that have mentioned, you know, they've heard about it or they're wondering about it. I've had listeners send me messages asking about telemedicine and, um, you know, basically the gist of it is people want to know, is it all it's cracked up to be? It seems like it's going to be such a huge advantage to pet owners to be able to communicate with their vets whenever they need to. You know, we can't always get to the vet when we need to. You can't always get in for an appointment. Um, Sometimes, you know, you're not sure should you bring your dog, should you not bring your dog. Is it worth, you know, that $100 Um, office fee, you know, just to go in and have them tell you it's a rash that's going to go away in a couple of days or, um, you know, your dog just pulled a muscle and he just needs to rest for a few days and he'll be fine. So telemedicine brings about this way to communicate with your vet for a much cheaper price um, and to get a little bit of information and advice before actually making that vet visit. I don't think we're quite there yet to that point where we can use telemedicine strictly. Um, And I actually spoke this week with James Andrews, who uh, is a veterinarian. And if you remember back in December, I spoke with him uh, about health trackers for dogs. Uh, James is the founder of a company called Felcana. The company focuses on pet technology. Um, And of course, he's also a veterinarian. So, um, you know, he's got some some great insights into the veterinary field, but he also, uh, you know, runs Falcona, which is focused on technology. Basically, what happened was that he began to become frustrated um, seeing all these pets coming into his office for treatments for diseases that could have been caught so much earlier if pet owners had known the signs, the symptoms to look for. Um, A lot of times, you know, what it comes down to is cost. We love our dogs. We want to take the best care of them possible. But, you know, when you're looking at a two, three, four hundred dollar vet bill, and maybe it's something that you can wait, you know, wait it out and it's going to go away or it's going to get better, things like that. Um, so he started to get really frustrated with that. And he started Falcona. Uh, of course, they have a pet tracker, which is what I talked to him about last time. Um, but now, you know, he's starting to see uh, telemedicine becoming more important in the veterinary field as well. So uh, I wanted to talk to him to get his opinion on uh w- As pet owners, should we be using telemedicine right now? Do we need to wait until things are developed a little bit more? Where does he see this going in the future? Um, And of course, is Falcona going to be part of this? They are a company that we already trust as far as um, the the smart caller, the health tracker that they've developed. So, uh, you know, are they going to be a part of this? What should we as pet parents be looking for? Um, And again, you know, should we be using this technology right now? What should we? we be using it for? What kind of things should we not be using it for? So um, James gave me some great information and I'm excited to share it with you guys. So take a listen to the interview. Last time I talked to you, we talked mostly about Falcona and, um, you know, different um, activity trackers and things that are are popping up. We're seeing them on the pet market um, as far as technology. So, and then today we wanted to talk about um, telemedicine and how that's kind of growing in popularity as well. Yes. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And I think, you know, I think telemedicine is a really interesting area um, of, of veterinary medicine at the moment. Um, I think there's there's you know, some some new stuff coming on the market as we speak that, that's really interesting. And I think there's, you know, a lot of opportunity over the next sort of 10, 10 or so years to, to really transform how, how people interact with their veterinarians. Yeah, I agree. It seems like right now we're just kind of scratching the surface of telemedicine. And I know um, for humans, too, it's kind of just starting to come up that you can contact your healthcare providers for yourself and for your pets uh, online through apps on smartphones and things like that. So it's really uh, interesting and I'm excited to see where it's heading in the future. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely right. And I think, you know, you touched on the human telemedicine world and i think i think that the veterinary telemedicine world is probably probably about 10 years behind really in terms of 
the the sophistication and the technology that, that they're using. Um, and I think I think there are a few reasons for that. One is one is really pets can't talk, and there's only there's only so much information you can gather over a, a teleconference with a pet and and its owner. Um, so so it's still you know very very embryonic in 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 the veterinary world versus the human world. Yeah, I I agree with that. It's um you know it seems like with everything in the pet industry is sort of we do it as humans first and then we relay that information to our pets. So um, it is hard. I think one of the things that I hear the most from pet owners when their dog's not feeling well or they have any kind of a health issue going on, allergies, things like that, you can ask questions. Your dogs can't give you answers. They can't tell you how they're feeling. So it's it's difficult for you to gather that information to relay through um, telemedicine. But of course, as you said, you know, there are definitely going to be some advancements there in the next decade or so. So it'll be exciting to see which direction that goes. Yeah, exactly right. You know, for example, if you've got a, you know, if you're a human you know, having a teleconference with your, with your doctor, um, then it's quite easy to tell your doctor that you've got a headache or you've got a sore knee or you know, you've been you know, feeling a bit you know, feverish or whatever your symptoms are. It's very easy for you, you to communicate that to your, to your doctor. However, if you're a pet owner, um, you have to translate what you think is wrong with your, your dog or your cat and translate that to your veterinarian. And that's that's really hard to do um, as a pet owner because you don't know all the signs and symptoms and clinical examination techniques that a veterinarian does know. Um, and, and so it's, it's difficult for you as a pet owner to be able to give the vet enough information over a, you know, over a telephone or over a Skype conference um, to really make telemedicine work well today. That's an interesting point. So can you, I mean, for our readers who are pet owners, can you kind of touch on maybe things as a pet owner that you you wouldn't, um, obviously that, you know, there's going to be some serious things that you wouldn't want to try, even try telemedicine and maybe go right to the vet, um, but some things where telemedicine could really benefit you and save you some time and maybe some money on a visit to the veterinarian. Yeah, I, th- I think the, the, the really obvious um, benefits for telemedicine and, and pet owners and veterinarians today is really for for repeat visits or for post surgical checkups and and things like that, where where the vet has already examined your cat or your dog, they already understand what the problems were that they've now treated, and they want to check in with you so that they can make sure that everything's progressing appropriately. Um, I think that's really the the sort of primary use case at the moment for for telemedicine. I think I think over time that'll that'll shift away from sort of monitoring and checkups more towards diagnosis as well. Uh, but I think I think we're a little bit away from that today. Yeah, I know there are some uh, you know like I mentioned apps um, and there are some websites that uh, will allow telemedicine now. Some of those apps will allow you to take photos, share photos with the vet um, of your dog. But it's certainly hard to diagnose anything, especially I think like you said with animals where you you can't say all of the symptoms. Um, So to diagnose through telemedicine is really tricky. Exactly, exactly. And it's some of the key um, history taking or clinical examination techniques that a veterinarian will use in there in their office, you, know, you just can't do over over a Skype call. So, for example, you can't you, know, you can't examine a dog's chest and use a stethoscope to to listen to the dog's lung or the dog's heart if you're if you're remote. Um, you can't take the dog's temperature very easily if you're if you're remote. Yes, you can have a, a conversation with the pet owner to ask them if they think the dog is is hotter and and have a, a fairly um, subjective-based conversation over Skype to do that, but it really is something that, that that's reasonably inaccurate and very very judgmental. Um, so I think I think what we'll what we'll see is in the in the future um, there have been solutions to these sorts of problems. So solutions to being able to um, get an accurate remote reading of a dog's temperature 
or even being able to listen to a dog's heart rate using a stethoscope. And I think we'll see we'll see a lot of solutions to those problems through things like connected devices. So connected devices that can, can monitor your dog's temperature in real time and feed that back to the telemedicine vet. So when they are having a, a telemedicine conference with a, with a pet owner, they can actually get an accurate reading of what that dog's temperature is right, right then, there and now. Um, so I think, I think eventually we will see solutions to these problems, but it's not something uh, that's available today. That's interesting because right now, you know, pretty much what we have is almost like a, an instant messenger or a, a, like a text messaging service with your vet is what we're seeing now. So you think that we're going to go into maybe a, a completely separate device that could monitor. Um, I know last time when I spoke with you, we talked about Falcona and smart callers. Um, and so what you're, you're thinking is that maybe we're going to see something completely different like a smart caller that could monitor those vital signs and feed that information back to your veterinarian i i think so in, in the future we will see um, what what we describe as a collision between technology and biology where everything will will come together so that we can use connected devices that may be a connected collar it may be even an implantable device that sits under a dog or cat skin, um, and those devices will be able to measure biometric data in real time. So it could be temperature, it could be blood glucose levels, it could be potassium levels, whatever whatever we can realistically develop and accurately measure. Um, I, I think we'll end up with technology to be able to do that, and then for that technology to connect effectively through the cloud so that a veterinarian, wherever they are in the world, can, can get that accurate, real-time information. That's exciting. It would certainly uh, you know, be a, a huge benefit to pet owners if they could have that peace of mind all the time that their, their pet was being monitored. Um, I know we have a boxer who has a, a heart condition. She was diagnosed about two and a half years ago with a heart condition. So uh, wouldn't it be a huge peace of mind for our family if we knew that she was being monitored all the, you know, around the clock with an implanted device or um, a smart collar of, of some kind that would track that for us? Exactly, it'd be fantastic for the pet owner. And it'd also be fantastic for veterinarians because they'd be able to engage with their patients and their patients' owners on a much more appropriate basis. And it wouldn't revolve around an appointment in a, in a veterinarian's office. It, it can happen whenever it's necessary and wherever that pet owner or veterinarian is in the world. So I think, I think it's going to be pretty revolutionary for, for pet owners and for animal health and for veterinarians. And I think we'll, we'll see this sort of start to emerge. You know, we're already seeing it start to emerge today, but I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a good few years before it really all comes together and we do see this collision, as we, we describe it, of, of technology and biology. So right now for pet owners that maybe are looking to, you know, we have a lot of tech-savvy pet owners now that uh, want to maybe dip their toes into the telemedicine area uh you know you would recommend pretty much just for dogs that have already been seen by a veterinarian for either um you know surgery or um a treatment for something and using the telemedicine as more of a post-op kind of um, absolutely yeah absolutely or alternatively if, if it's for some uh advice which is you know, not particularly urgent so for example if you wanted to ask your veterinarian if um, you know if it's appropriate to use a certain worming medication or if it's appropriate to um, you know, take your dog to a certain part of the world and what diseases you would need to be aware of for, for, for that sort of travel then you know, I think that sort of consultation makes a lot of sense to do over telemedicine but I think if you want to you know really have a clinical exam which potentially could lead to a diagnosis that I, today I don't think that um, technology quite permits it. It will do in the future but not quite today. That's excellent advice. Uh, I think you know some pet owners might think that telemedicine is a great way to not have to take their dog to the vet all the time or their cat to the vet all the time. Um, but it, it, I guess we really need to educate pet owners that telemedicine isn't something that we can rely on 100% right now. 
no, it's a great it's a great addition to the portfolio of options to to be able to contact your veterinarian. Um, it, you know, it's fantastic for for communicating, but it isn't it isn't the solution today to um, to not having to travel to your veterinarian. And I mentioned too uh, when we first started talking, I had seen on your website uh, that you had just been to Crufts, and I saw the video um, on there. And last time that you were with us, you talked more about Falcona, and we talked about um, some of the products that you offer. Um, so I'm going to link that for our readers too, so they can listen to that uh, previous podcast if they haven't listened to that already. Um, that'll be there. But um, what are you guys? What's going on new with Falcona that you can tell us about? Um, yeah, so we're, we're continuing to really sort of build out our, our technology at the moment. Um, our team size continues to grow as well. So we've now got two data scientists in-house um, helping us to analyze a lot of the information that we're gathering about dogs and cats. Um, we found that our experience at Crufts, where we had you know, hundreds and hundreds of pet owners, you know, dog owners primarily, come and and visit us on our stands and talk through our our connected collar and our micro location beacon technology, and we we had tremendous feedback from from pet owners. So we're we're just incorporating some of the feedback from Crufts. We're running a, a beta testing exercise at the moment to make sure our technology works really nicely, and we're incorporating those two inputs um, to develop our final product. And so our, our first. Our first product to hit the market will, will launch in in late summer of this year, um, and it's all going very very well. And we're looking forward to you know, offering new technology to pet owners and veterinarians to ultimately help their their dogs and their cats live happier, healthier, longer lives. Congratulations! That's exciting. Later this summer. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. It's still you know there's a long way to go in terms of. Um, you know, finalizing the product and, and making sure it is you know, absolutely perfect. Uh, but it's all progressing very, very nicely. We're in the process of also um, building a funding round, uh, you know, as all new state, new, new sort of startup businesses like ourselves require, we need to continually raise funding. So we're you know, having conversations with investors in both the UK and the United States of America at the moment about, uh, about our, our future fundraising. That's very exciting. And do you see Falcon in the future maybe getting into the telemedicine side of um, of technology? Well, as I said before, you know, we, we think that there is a, a likely collision of technology and biology at some point in the future. And Falconer is uniquely positioned because it's the only veterinary-led technology company really in, in the world. And so you know, being part of wherever technology innovation is happening is something that we want to be in. Um, so we're keeping our eyes you know, closely um, attached to, the, to telemedicine. And uh, you know, who knows, watch the space. It could be, it could be something in the future that, that, that we want to make sure we lead in. I don't know about you, but I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye on telemedicine and see where that heads. I'm excited to hear what James says about, you know, the growth and the development of it um, over the next decade or so. So it's definitely something to keep your eye on. But, uh, you know, again, as he said, certainly nothing that you want to use 100% of the time right now. If you have any questions about telemedicine or any questions for James that I can relate to him, um, just jump on our website, which is seriapets.com. Leave any questions, comments, concerns. You can type those up. Uh, you can record them if you want, and I might even use them in a future podcast. Uh, but I will get those questions answered for you one way or the other. Uh, and again, if it's something that needs to be passed on to James, I will certainly do that and see if I can get those uh, all answered for you. While you're on our website, if you could just take a quick second to give me a review on iTunes, that really helps when I'm reaching out to experts in the pet industry, veterinarians like James, um, CEOs of companies, things like that, to come on the show uh, and speak with me. So if you guys could take a second to do that, I would really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Theory of Pets, and I will see you guys back next time. Thanks for listening.